Good morning. Welcome to the webinar series on managing drought in the Southern Plains. I am Margaret Boone with the Southern Climate Impacts Planning Program. I will be the moderator for today's webinar. Rachel Riley, SKIP Associate Program Manager, will be managing the webinar. Since many of our regular presenters and participants are not available this week, this will be a shortened briefing focusing on the current drought conditions and outlook. Brian Fuchs with the National Drought Mitigation Center will be presenting. I would like to recognize the support of those who made this webinar possible. Chad McNutt with the National Integrated Drought Information Dave Brown with NOAA's Regional Climate Services Remus NOAA Research Unit. We also greatly appreciate those of you who join us in this webinar series and recognize Our next webinar will be on July 26th, which will be a shortened briefing version that will be posted on Skip's YouTube channel. Our next full webinar with focus topic will be on August 9th, with the topic to be determined. You may ask questions or make comments at any time through tap typing in your chat box. We will now begin with an update of current conditions from Brian Fuchs. Brian? Good morning, everyone, and thank you for the introduction. Again, my name is Brian Fuchs, and I'm a climatologist with the National Drought Mitigation Center at the University of Nebraska up in Lincoln. And what I'm going to do is uh, briefly go through uh, the current conditions, uh, a little bit on some of the outlook, and also uh, some information on drought impacts and how you can report them. So first slide, or next slide. Uh, this is uh, where we were during the, the last SKIP uh, teleconference and webinar. And you can see this is dated June 12th, and, and uh, some areas to focus on uh, before we go to the next slide is really uh, look at that area from Arkansas up through Indiana and Illinois, as well as uh, some of the areas in, of the Rockies into the central, into portions of the northern Rockies, as well as uh, in the central plains. Uh, we, we've seen quite a bit of development in this region, and it's been quite rapidly over a very short period of time. Uh, down in the southern plains, uh, we had uh, seen quite a bit of rain in, in some areas, which did allow back uh, during the last call to see uh, several areas go into the drought-free status where we didn't even see abnormally dry conditions. But uh, uh, going to the next slide, we'll see how some of those areas have changed. And uh, one thing to look at with this map is that it really stands out is how much of the uh, severe to extreme drought has really popped up, especially with uh, the new release here today. Uh, we're seeing all the way through the Ohio River Valley down into Arkansas, portions of uh, Illinois, Missouri, Kentucky. Uh, the conditions over the last uh, two months have been really dry. Uh, we talked about last time a flash drought developing. Well, I think that drought definitely has developed and it is continuing to intensify. And down in the Skip region, uh, we look at the map for today, but also uh, look at over the last two days since the end of the drought monitor period, uh, for those that don't know, during the, the making of the drought monitor, we cut off the data input at uh, 8 a.m. each Tuesday morning. And for those of you along the Gulf Coast in Texas and in southern Louisiana, uh, there's been, uh, and even in the portions of East Texas, there's been uh, some fairly significant rainfall over the last uh, 24 to 48 hours and uh, continuing rainfall going on today. I had just looked at the most recent uh, radar returns. And, and there's a nice uh, slow-moving area of rain that uh, has kind of just parked itself over the uh, portions of the Skip region and the Southern Plains and into the Southeast. So uh, definitely have the ability to uh, uh, see some improvement, especially in those areas uh, of East Texas that uh, uh, popped back into that abnormally dry uh, region over the last uh, few weeks. Uh, but also this time of year, we're continuing to talk about the heat. Uh, uh, temperatures have continued to be well above normal, uh, not only in, in the Plains states, but much of the country, and that is definitely hampering uh, any type of improvement, even when we do see rainfall, and also impacting uh, agricultural concerns uh, greatly, and it's over a large part of the country. Uh, next slide. Here are the statistics for today. Uh, I'm going to focus on uh, the bottom panel for the uh, CONUS US, and currently, what we're seeing is about 71, almost 72 percent of the country is designated in some way, shape, or form in D0 through D4. And the number just to the right of that, we're looking at about 51 percent of the country in drought. And I, I'm looking at the bottom panel. I'm sorry, that is for uh, uh, including Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico. So I apologize for that mistake. Looking up above, uh, we see 
you that almost 80% is in D0 for the contiguous U.S. and almost 61% in drought. And uh, these numbers are, are very high. We, we've seen them come up quite rapidly. If you look uh, just three months ago for the contiguous U.S., we were only at about 38%. And so uh, since we've hit the end of spring and the first part of summer, we've seen a rapid in spread and intensification of drought conditions. One change that is different from a year ago, if we look up on that top line from one year ago, we were looking at uh, almost 12% of the country in D4 and almost 19% in D3, D4 compared to right now where uh, we're about 11.5% of D3, D4 and less than 1% in D4. And that, that really shows the contrast uh, to the drought at this point in time for this year compared to last year. The drought was really isolated into the southern plain states, Oklahoma, Texas, portions of Louisiana, New Mexico, and uh, it was very intense. So we didn't see a wide expanse of, expanse of drought last year, but where we did have drought, it was very intense. Where this year, we're seeing more drought overall. The intensity is not there yet, but I anticipate as we move forward in summer, we're going to start seeing those uh, D3, D4 numbers start to increase as well. Next slide. And here's a regional view uh, of last time where we were uh, for uh, uh, the last uh, SKIP webinar. And again, just a zoom in view. Uh, at this point in time, uh, last time we were at 66% uh, of the region in drought and uh, uh, almost 86% in D D0 through D4. So I'll go to the next slide then, and you can compare that to now where we're about 86% of the region in drought and 95% of the region in D0 through D4. And so we do see this intensification taking place. It is the middle part of the summer. Uh, typically, uh, it's going to be warm. Uh, the dryness is what's really uh, starting to uh, uh, spread through uh, portions of the region as well. And again, looking at the numbers, it's, it's, uh, the overall D1 through D4 numbers, which I have highlighted in the blue circle, they're very similar. To where we were a year ago. And with that being said, uh, the region is, as a whole is still suffering from drought. And, and for many, they're going to say, well, our drought never did end from last year, and it's just going into a multi-year event. And I think that is a good way of uh, expressing what we're seeing throughout uh, the Southern Plains is even with the recovery that we saw through the winter and early spring, uh, the area was still left very vulnerable. There were still some lingering impacts, especially hydrology uh, impacts uh, throughout the region, and also some agricultural impacts for those uh, pastures and rangelands that did not fully recover from last year. And so we're seeing that go into a second year. Uh, one thing to really look at on this slide is that D4 number. Uh, last year at this time, we were seeing about 47% of the region in D4 compared to less than a quarter of 1% right now. So. Uh, that has been the saving grace that at this point the drought, uh, the overall drought numbers are similar, but the intensity is definitely uh, a little bit uh, less compared to last year. Uh, next slide. Looking at some of the products from the regional climate centers in their suite of ACES maps for the Applied Climate Information System, uh, looking at the departure of normal over the last 30 days, and again, we're starting to see a few more greens pop up in East Texas, Southern Louisiana, where we're seeing three to six inches above normal. I know those down in the Houston area really picked up uh, some substantial rain over the last uh, 24 to 48 hours along the Texas Gulf Coast. But you also start seeing some areas uh, in North Central Oklahoma, into Kansas, even into Arkansas, which were over the last uh, 30 days. Uh, they're three to six inches below normal. So those deficits uh, start uh, uh, mounting in a hurry. And, and overall through the region, you're seeing most areas uh, right at uh, normal to three inches below normal over the last 30 days. In the lower left-hand panel on the 60-day departures, uh, we can see that those deficits uh, are spreading uh, uh, throughout much of the region. Again, uh, 48, four to eight inches below normal, it seems to be common uh, throughout the entire southern plains. Uh, especially over Arkansas, eastern Oklahoma, southeast Kansas, and into portions of Texas and Louisiana as well. Next slide. Uh, the year-to-date departure from normals, we can really see on this product still those uh, rains that helped with the recovery in portions of Louisiana and east Texas 
uh, during this time where we're seeing a surplus year to date of anywhere from 5 to 10 inches, even some pockets of 10 to 15 inches above normal for uh, the calendar year so far. Uh, but you can see that delineation quite quite nicely between areas in Arkansas and Oklahoma, Missouri, along that Mississippi Valley, where those areas are, are anywhere from 10 to 15 inches below normal uh, during that same time frame. And on the 12-month map on the lower left-hand panel, you can really see that if you go back a full year, uh, what we're seeing here to date in Texas still gets kind of washed out in places uh, where that recovery has uh, has been taking place, but in my opinion, it, it's still not fully recovered and still very vulnerable as the, the precipitation cuts off and the heat maintains itself. Uh, it's going to be hard to, to maintain the recovery effort in some of those areas, and I highlighted some of those regions that over the last 12 months are anywhere from 12 to 16 inches, maybe even 20 inches below normal uh, during that time frame, and those are substantial deficits. Uh, next map, or excuse me, next slide. Looking at some of the drought indices here, I have the 30-day and the 60-day SPIs, and on the 30-day, you can really see that those uh, areas of East Texas, Louisiana, even into portions of New Mexico and Arizona, they have picked up some precipitation, and that corresponds well, especially in New Mexico and Arizona, with uh, the, the active uh, monsoon season that is, is being forecasted and predicted by the Weather Service. Uh, you can see some areas on the last 30 days through Iowa, Nebraska, the Dakotas, and then into the eastern Corn Belt, southern uh, Wisconsin, and into southern Michigan that uh, those SPI values would correspond quite easily to a D3 and D4 drought just over the last uh, 30 days if you would uh, tie that directly into the U.S. Drought Monitor. And on the last 60 days on the lower left-hand panel, you can see those uh, extreme SPI values as well. Uh, one thing to highlight on this product is uh, uh, you can see the, uh, the definite storm track of uh, the, the tropical system that went over Florida and helped to eliminate their drought conditions quite rapidly where uh, uh, several inches of, of rain fell right over the, the, the hardest hit areas of drought in Florida. But you can really start seeing that uh, it's not isolated this year. Last year we saw the, the dryness really in the southern plains and this year it spread through uh, much of the country outside of the Pacific Northwest and, and uh, portions of New England. Uh, next slide. And here is uh, the five-day outlook as far as temperatures and precipitation. I'll start with temperatures first in the upper right-hand panel. And you can see uh, over Texas into uh, portions of Oklahoma and New Mexico where uh, rain is anticipated and forecasted that that's going to help keep the temperatures down during this time as well, that uh, actually going to see some below normal temperatures for this time of year. Uh, but areas to the north, uh, through uh, the central Rockies into the northern Rockies all the way up into the Great Lakes. That dome of high pressure that's been sitting over the region for quite some time now and just keeps working its way east and west through the region, you're going to see that continuing with uh, temperature departures anywhere from 6 to 9 degrees above normal. And it, it's interesting to point out in the desert southwest as well in southern California, you can see the, the ebb and flow of temperatures being well below normal, and that corresponds well with the precipitation map on the lower left-hand side that as you bring those uh, rain events into the southwest, that will definitely help to tamper some of the, the temperatures that have been well above normal up to this point. Uh, with the precipitation map, I mentioned that that area from East Texas uh, up towards the Tennessee Valley, and you can really see that even in the next five days, if that's the area that's highlighted to uh, see the most precipitation, uh, anywhere from four and a half inches over uh, uh, Tennessee to uh, over two inches in portions of uh, East Texas and Southern Louisiana. But you can also see how sharp that gradient line is, that if you uh, miss out on these uh, uh, the heaviest precipitation events, it drops off uh, quite rapidly into areas of uh, Kansas and Missouri where you're only looking at maybe a tenth to a quarter of an inch of rain. And these areas are, are definitely uh, drying out rapidly uh, in the grain belt with uh, uh, intensification of drought uh, taking place uh, 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 each week as, as we move forward. Uh, you can look at the desert southwest and see those uh, precipitation amounts and you start looking at these amounts of one and a half to approaching two inches. And for some of these areas that uh, get uh, maybe seven inches of uh, precipitation in a calendar year, you're talking a good portion of their annual totals 
are anticipated during this event. So it would be interesting to see how that plays out and could bring some welcome relief to the neighbors over in New Mexico and portions of Colorado uh, that have definitely uh, been fighting through uh, multi-year uh, drought events. Uh, next slide. The 8 to 14 day outlook, I'm going to start with the temperatures on the upper right hand panel and we continue to see this, this warm pattern uh, outside of the southern plains uh, where we've already talked about how the, the precipitation is going to help curtail temperatures a little bit looking to be near normal but even in July that means it's going to be hot. Uh, going into the central and northern plains you can see that the likelihood of, of above normal temperatures is, is fairly good and this is just going to continue the, the heat wave that's been going on over the last several weeks. Uh, along the coast you can see that there's actually some below normal temperatures anticipated so we'll see how that plays out as well. Uh, precipitation, it, it's good to see some of those uh, above normal uh, precipitation chances over New Mexico, southern Colorado and continuing in East Texas, Southeast Texas and Louisiana uh, moving into the mid-Atlantic states as well. Uh, that dryness looks like it's, it's anticipated to continue over the Great Basin region as well as the central and northern Rockies and northern Great Plains. So uh, we'll, we'll look and see how the next 14 days, which will put us pretty close to the end of July if this continues to play out. It's so through the end of the month, uh, very much anticipating it to be uh, warm and dry uh, over some of these areas of the, the central and northern plains and Midwest that have been uh, warm and dry over the last few months. Next slide, please. And here is the seasonal outlook, so looking at July and then also July through September from the Climate Prediction Center. And the theme stays fairly consistent uh, uh, for the month of July, above normal temperatures uh, really centered over uh, uh, the, the Midwest region, the, the Corn Belt. And if you look at the precipitation chances, it uh, lines up quite well with uh, uh, below normal uh, and precipitation uh, chances through that region. Uh, many in that area are comparing uh, the developing drought to conditions that were last saw in 1988 and, and there has been a great deal of agricultural impact not only to row, crop, row crops but also to uh, pasture and grazing lands and uh, forage availability for this region. If you look at the precipitation uh, prediction for July, you can see that that uh, monsoon uh, forecast is maintaining itself from the Climate Prediction Center that it's looking to be very active and, and good chances of above normal precipitation through the region and that continues on the, the seasonal uh, panel down below if you look at precipitation as well that all the way through September that active monsoon season continues uh, through Arizona, New Mexico and West Texas which would uh, really help to bring some relief to the, that region as it has been dry for quite some time. Uh, the temperature forecast, we've uh, been on one of the warmest 12 months on record for the U.S. as a whole over the last 12 months and we continue to see this July, August, September where almost the entire country is anticipating above normal chances for above normal temperatures during this time. So uh, we continue to see that trend which in some areas that is going to make uh, even uh, with some precipitation recovery from uh, any existing drought to be, to be harder as those temperatures maintain themselves. Slide please. And here is the seasonal drought outlook that uh, I posted when we had our last uh, webinar. So you can see this was the one that was released on June 7th. And uh, uh, at this point in time there wasn't a lot that was pointing towards this widespread drought development through uh, the central plains and into the Midwest that uh, we weren't really picking that up and we were at that point seeing that uh, the Climate Prediction Center was already focusing on some of that active monsoon uh, rainfall developing over uh, Arizona, New Mexico and West Texas. So we'll move forward to the next slide and this is the, excuse me, this is the current drought outlook that was just released uh, last Thursday. And again, I'll point out right away that the monsoon season that we've seen on all the Climate Prediction Center products looks to be uh, uh, quite uh, uh, good this year, quite active, bringing some precipitation to the region. So hopefully we can put some dents into uh, the current drought depiction in Arizona, New Mexico, West Texas, and Colorado. But we've seen a, a rapid expanse, expansion of uh, where we are anticipating drought to persist and to even develop uh, and all the way from western Pennsylvania 
uh, across the entire central part of the country, all the way out into Nevada. Uh, so what we're what uh, what this is telling me to anticipate is uh, we're not going to see these conditions go away anytime soon. Uh, for the rest of the summer, we're going to be very much focused on on drought conditions, very little chance of recovery in many of these areas, and we're probably going to see intensification taking place. Uh, also, right now, there is a 50 to 60 percent chance of El Nino developing, which for the folks in the southern plains, that, that uh, typically means through the winter months, a wetter pattern than normal, a wetter than normal pattern. But we had a La Nina last year, which typically means drier than normal, and it was well above normal. So uh, I, we'll wait and see how that all falls out, how it develops, and if El Nino acts like it's supposed to, maybe we can see a further recovery through the southern plain states uh, with that El Nino signal. I think, okay, uh, the next thing I want to talk about briefly are drought impacts. And I pulled up this screenshot from uh, the, drought mitigation, the Drought Mitigation Center's Drought Impact Reporter this morning. And one thing that stood out to me was uh, in Oklahoma, over the last 30 days, there has not been any drought-related impacts being reported. And maybe that's, that's a good thing. Maybe people are tired of talking about drought and they're not even reporting any problems that they're seeing. But I do know that there has been some issues with drought through that region. And we see some of the neighboring states that, that we're seeing uh, drought impacts being reported. And one thing to continue to, to uh, bring, I wanted to bring out to the public and to the users of this information is, if you're suffering drought-related impacts, please come to the Drought Impact Reporter at NDNC or even email at uh, drought at southernclimate.org your drought-related impacts and they'll get them into the system. That uh, it's, it's imperative that we stay on top of these drought impacts. It not only helps the drought mount monitor authors to correctly draw the U.S. drought monitor map because the impact information does play into our depiction, but it also helps local officials realize the extent and uh, the intensification of drought in their region. If they're not seeing these impacts, uh, it's hard for them to uh, go to the right officials telling them that they're having problems with drought. So again, the Drought Impact Reporter URL is listed as well as the skip drought uh, e impact email. Please use either or both of those to get this information to us that I, we really need to stay on top of this. And if you have questions about this, please contact uh, me here at the NDMC or the folks at SKIP and they can help you uh, really uh, focus on what we're meaning by impacts and what we're looking for uh, as far as input. Uh, next slide. And here's an example of how uh, this impact information is being used. Uh, uh, USDA is coming out with secretarial disaster des designations, and this is on the current crop year. Uh, these are showing counties that are being are deemed eligible uh, through uh, uh, some of their impact information as well as uh, uh, their drought uh, issues that they're suffering from. And the next slide also shows. Uh, some of these designations, and this uh, this came out in a report from the Department of Ag yesterday that uh, they're they're using the drought monitor quite a bit now on on some of these processes, and it's, it's being discussed in the new farm bill as well that uh, uh, getting eligibility for some of these programs is going to be tied back into the drought monitor, and we're we're looking at that impact information, and it's not going to guarantee your eligibility. You're still going to have to show a loss, but uh, these uh, products are, are definitely getting tied back into how the drought monitor is being depicted. So for each one of these states within the region, you have a vested interest in making sure that that uh, drought monitor map each week is as accurate and as up-to-date as it possibly can be for your state because there can be uh, some benefits associated with it. And last slide, I think. Yeah. Here is my contact information. Again, I'm Brian Fuchs at the National Drought Mitigation Center. I have my email address and phone number. And I don't know if you wanted to open up uh, any questions via the chat or anything on, on this if we have some time. Uh, yes, Brian, we can. Thank you so much for giving me. If you would like to ask any questions or have any comments, please use. Go to the next slide and show our list of resources. Um, we'll leave this up for your reference. Um, and as Brian said, uh, please uh, use the Drought Impact Reporter, which is a
impacts that you've seen or you can As a reminder, presentation materials from today will be posted to the Drop Portal on the Southern Plains section, and a two-page PDF summary will be prepared and posted um, by early next week. The webinar recording itself will be posted to our Skip YouTube page and uh, linked to the Skip Facebook page as well. Our next webinar will be scheduled for, um, followed by a next full webinar, and that'll be on August 9th. As always, we encourage you to continue to spread the word to make sure all of those dealing with aspects of this drought are part of this larger community and can access support that they need. We encourage you to pass along the PDF summaries, our webinar announcements, or any of the other information linked on these various sites. So unless there's any questions, um, there appears to be. Um, we want to thank you for your time today, and we look forward to continuing this conversation with you. Thank you.